Hey, what's up you guys and welcome back to MVR. Today we're looking at another HTC Vive hype campaign, possible new life for old VR hardware and exciting news regarding a new upcoming Valve product. So without further ado, let's jump in. First of all, let's take a look at HTC Vive's recent marketing campaign centered around the HTC Vive Flow. The company is preparing to hold what seems to be a new product unveiling on October 14th, right before Facebook Connect, which is being held in the same month. HTC says we'll be hearing about some big news in a small package, with various images of what at first glance appears to be a water bottle of all things. Now people are right to be skeptical since the last time HTC engaged in a marketing campaign like this, the VR community got all riled up for a new standalone VR headset which ultimately ended up being purely business oriented, which with its business price tag left a lot of VR enthusiasts greatly disappointed. There is some room to remain cautiously optimistic though. Back in February of 2020, the company showed off a concept XR headset called Vive Proton, which was touted as a small form factor device presented in two flavors, a standalone model and a tethered model. The Go With The Flow title may hold a more concrete clue though, as a new HTC trademark for a product with the same name was filled on August 26, 2021 which refers to a head-mounted display for computer simulated reality, namely virtual reality, augmented reality, and mixed reality. Further strengthening the idea that we're going to be looking at new VR hardware is the fact that HTC Vive is now providing free wireless adapters with the purchase of a full Cosmos Elite kit, an amazing offer which also happens to end on the exact date of the new product unveiling. Suffice to say though, given the company's recent stance, whatever product they come out with at this time is very likely to be mostly business oriented, but I would be very happy to be proven wrong in the course of the coming weeks. Moving on to VR hardware news that deals more with past released products rather than future ones, if you've spent any amount of time trying to pick out a VR headset while on a budget, then the Oculus Quest line of devices are sure to ring a bell. Originally shooting to fame back in 2019 for being an extremely affordable option as well as being the first all-in-one 6 degrees of freedom headset, meaning that you didn't need an external PC to run games or have to worry about the numerous cables running through your room in order to set it all up. But before the Quest, there was the equally affordable but lesser known Oculus Go, a 3 degrees of freedom standalone headset which was quickly forgotten about after the release of its bigger brother. After stopping sales of the device and announcing the upcoming shutdown of its store, the device was all but resigned to becoming a pretty expensive paperweight at best or expensive e-waste at worst. Luckily, John Carmack, the legendary programmer and key player in the Oculus Rift development, announced in a tweet that he's won a decisive battle within Facebook to finally release root access to Oculus Go, meaning that there might be some future hope for the device after all. Carmack's hope that this unlocked OS opens up the ability for the hardware to remain somewhat useful in the future and that users will still be able to update the software long after the official update servers are shut down. Personally, I think this is one of the more positive moves we've seen from Facebook since the mandatory Facebook account requirement and hope that this might mean that we can hope for a similar future for the Quest. It also creates a nice platform for DIY headset makers to start out from in order to play around with their own tracking solutions, which is overall a pretty good thing. More options mean more potential for competition and ensures that hopefully we'll never get locked into a single business when it comes to our VR needs. Speaking about VR needs, one thing that's been the highlight of VR rumors and speculation has been the follow-up to Valve's Index VR headset. Thanks to the findings uncovered by Sadly It's Bradley, we have a pretty reasonable understanding of not only what to expect from Valve's new offering, but also roughly what timeline we're looking at. I'm going to be providing a quick rundown of the highlights, but if you want to get full details, I highly suggest you check out his recent livestream. The existence of the new HMD, codenamed Deckard, was determined by the presence of several strings with the titular Deckard name found in SteamVR configuration files. Similar mentions were also found in the SteamVR Lighthouse drivers, which all but confirms that the newly listed device is somehow related to VR and is undergoing active testing by Valve and possibly certain select external developers as well. What's extremely new is the discovery of a module file titled Decker.py, which, if we take a closer look, uniquely identifies a Qualcomm chip, which seems to be present in the device. While the chip that Qualcomm is most famous for is the Snapdragon 
Snapdragon XR2, no known chip currently has the 4 plus 8 CPU cores available, which strongly suggests that we're going to be looking at a custom yet unannounced chip designed exclusively for Valve. And while the Qualcomm chip would mean that we'd be talking about an ARM-powered HMD, it's unlikely that Valve will split off their store entirely since currently all of the Steam library, including the soon-to-be-released Steam Deck, will be running on x86. Instead, Valve patents suggest that this HMD will be capable of using an external compute device, something like a Steam Deck, to perform split rendering, which basically means that both the HMD and the external device will work together to boost each other's compute power in order to run games. Which if you've seen my video on the Steam Deck, starts to make a whole lot of sense. Another feature that's all but confirmed will be the inclusion of micro-LED displays, which combine both the color benefits of LED displays with high refresh rate and increased pixel density, which prevents the screen door effect entirely. And helping boost the performance of the HMD is the inclusion of foveated rendering, which is enabled by an internal eye-tracking camera. In this screenshot from the SteamVR beta, you can see both a prism mode and a standalone system layer feature toggle, which are all very likely directly connected to the features mentioned earlier. Ever since the release of the Valve Index, many users have been waiting for Valve to release their own wireless adapter, which according to Valve themselves was a solved issue and was to be expected in the future. While the adapter never materialized, this likely had more to do with the fact that the YGIG2 standard, which would enable high-speed wireless communication, had not been finalized at the time. Since we know that the Deckard will be coming with a Qualcomm chip, we can be all but certain that it will support Wi-Fi 6, which would on its own be capable of supporting lower fidelity wireless VR, much like the Quest 2. Additional patents hint that it's now extremely likely that Valve will also be working on a modular system of head strap attachments, which could range from including an external processing unit or providing YGIG 2, which would enable high-end VR to be streamed from a beefy PC directly. And last but not least, while most users that have used the Valve Knuckles have been absolutely in love with them, it's no secret that there's also been a sizable group that have had the controllers break down on them. A sneak peek into more patents revealed that a newly updated knuckle design seems to fix at least some of the issues that users have been experiencing, like changing the size and position of the touchpad, relocating the home buttons, and upgrading the joystick to a more sturdier variety like the ones that we're likely to see on the upcoming Steam Deck. And here is a quick last minute update regarding the story. Almost immediately after Bradley's livestream, it seems that Valve updated Steam to remove nearly all mentions of the previously listed materials and software after these mentions being there for nearly 9 months, indicating that either Bradley was right on the money and Valve is hoping to prevent more details from leaking, or somehow Valve was looking to stir up even more hype by using what looks like incredibly convenient timing. Either way, with technology like this not only being worked on but apparently being actively tested, it looks like the near future of VR is looking incredibly exciting. While an exact release date for the Valve Deckard is currently unknown, another Valve device which I believe is gonna play a big role in the future of gaming is going to be coming by the end of this year. And if you want to find out more, I highly suggest you check out my other video on the subject where I give you a complete rundown of all specifications as well as explain how I believe this is all going to fit together. That's all for now, thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.